Hello, this is Matt Bergman, and you're listening to the Punk Rock Libertarians podcast, episode 64. Yeah. Yeah. 64. Wow, that's a lot of... 64. Yeah. 64, Jeff. <laughs> Shit, dude. Yeah, man. It, it, so, uh, I'm here tonight with uh, Jared Schneiderman. Yep. And Jeffrey Siegel. Jeffrey? You can use Jeffrey now. Yeah, <laughs> Jeffrey Siegel. <laughs> Jeffrey's one of the original Punk Rock Libertarians. And, uh, you know, he was on uh, most of our, like, first uh, few episodes and, you know, weekly. But, you know, since then, he's vagged out. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, but in all seriousness, uh, Jeff's a busy guy. Um, he's, like, uh, always traveling for work. And he's been back and forth living between Baltimore and, uh, what is it, upstate New York? Mm-hmm. So um, it's, it's always great to get Jeff back on the program, you know, kind of uh, touch base or in tips and <laughs> so you know we're lucky enough to have jeff here tonight and uh you know so uh this is uh we, we normally record on sunday nights and uh jared and i are set to leave for uh pork fest on tuesday night tuesday night and this will be jared's first time yeah man i'll be popping my pork fest cherry you lubed so, Jared, um, how excited are you to go to Porkfest the first time? You know, I was dude, talk- I've got a full chub. I was talking to our friend Dawson, <laughs> and he keeps saying that uh, you're going to get porked, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. Definitely plan on getting That's pretty porked. funny. So, so that's, this is like the, uh, you know, this is, these are kind of like the hazings, I guess, that uh, libertarians get from their friends when they tell them about Porkfest. Is that a common thing? I, I, I guess so, you know, <laughs> like, cause, uh, you know, one of my, one of my buddies at work, um, was, was trying to give me something like that. And like, it's, he was working up to it and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get pork. Ha ha ha. He's just like, I just like stole it from him. I think he's going to yeah. pork her dad. He's not going to pork her us. <laughs> um, do you want to explain what pork fest is or should we just assume our audience knows? Yeah, dude, I can explain that for you, dude. Okay. okay. Lay it out for me, man. <laughs> so give me the deets. Yeah, Pork Fest is put on by uh, the Free State Project. The Free State Project is a group of libertarians um, who have, uh, you know, organized a list. And at this point, I believe there's over 20,000 names on there of uh, people who have uh, pledged to move to New Hampshire at sometime within the next, I think it's five or ten years. Right. So, you know, they've, uh, they've accomplished their goal. And uh, there's still people signing up. And the object of the whole thing is, um, you know, th- to just make a, a freer state, hence the word free state project, the term free state project. They want to take over New Hampshire and leave everybody alone. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, and, you know, the thought behind that is, you know, you choose to nice. go to a state that's already pretty free as far as laws and stuff in comparison to other states. And then uh, they also pick the state where the the population isn't too dense so you know if, if you move 15 20 thousand people there especially if those people are activists you know you you'll have a good chance at, at spreading li- liberty and, and actually like affecting politics with uh you know like a, a chunk of libertarians uh voting yeah you know so th- there's actually free state um people who have actually been put into different public offices out there yeah so you know they've already you know they haven't even met the, the before they even got the amount of signatures that they were going for or in, you know, the deadline to move out there hasn't, hasn't occurred and they've already gotten people into uh, public office. So it's pretty cool. This will, this will be my fourth year going and it's, it's, I've loved it each time. I've never made it for the whole week yet. I, I'm there for most of the week, but um, you know, every time I go there, it's, it's just the shit. I look forward to it every year. And uh, by the time it ends, it's like, it, it's ending too soon. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited, man. Should be uh should be a good time. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, dude. Yeah. So so uh Jeffrey, man, you so you're gonna try to make it next year, dude? I'm not gonna make it this time. You said next year. Next, next year, year. So yeah. Next year, yeah. dude. Yeah. Next year. I'll be living closer. Yes. At that point. So it'll be a lot easier for me to get over. Cool. Totally. Yeah. I've been wanting to go. It just it hasn't just been I just haven't been able to work it out. Totes. <laughs> totes totes my goats. <laughs> uh so, so uh, you want to talk about your abortion of a podcast that you tried to do? <laughs> okay, so Status Ned. yeah, Status Ned came over um, a couple nights ago, and for some reason he was all fired up on gun control. And He's doing what? He was all fired up on gun control. Oh, okay. Are you familiar with Status Ned? No. So Status Ned's a friend of mine who I've, I've known for a long time, 
and he's libertarian in a lot of ways. You know, he voted for Gary Johnson in uh, 2012, and he'll be voting for him again in 2016, only because Bernie Sanders is, it looks like he's not going to be the Democratic nominee, you know. So he's, he's going to vote for Johnson again. But um, we call him Status Ned because he's status in a lot of ways, you know. And he's fired up about Orlando, so he's calling for gun control. You know, it's one of the ways where he isn't very libertarian. Uh-huh. But see, the last podcast we had, it seemed like I had him kind of convinced that the like that at least the gun control conversation that was happening around Orlando was misguided. So was that not the case? Was he just paying me lip service? Okay, this was the worst podcast that I have ever <laughs> fucking recorded. Okay, this is there's been there's been a couple times where I've recorded some shit, and I won't even talk about the other one because that'll that'll take a while to get into. But uh, you know, there's one. Um, so you know, it's basically we we did this podcast. It was about fifty minutes long. And at least 45 of it was Ned talking. <laughs> so he was just talking over just, you? Yes. He would literally, he would, he would, he was drunk too. So, oh, no. Yeah. When Ned gets drunk, oh man. Anyways, so he, he comes over and uh, he, he's all fired up talking gun control. And it's like, dude, I'm not even talking about this, dude. Gun control is fucking stupid. You know, I'm like, if you want, we can do a podcast. Because if I'm going to like suffer through this, we're at least going to record it. <laughs> yeah. So Maybe get some hits. Anyways, then he's like, well, I'm going to need numbers and statistics. And I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck about your statistics. You know, it's like, I, I believe in being free. You know, uh-huh. that's it. You know, it, it's not about like safety. It's about liberty. You know, that, that's why I'm a libertarian. You know, um, so anyways, he um, eventually he agrees to do it because I won't let him talk about it unless we record it. <laughs> and then because, uh, you know, we he lives a few houses down the street. So, you know, we'll hang out and drink all the time and, uh, you know, get blazed. So anyways, we do this podcast about 45 minutes of it is just him talking. And he'll ask me questions. And then before I'm, I can open up my mouth to answer it, he starts answering it for me. You know, and he's just going back and forth. And I'm like, dude, you know, this is just a a status Ned soliloquy, dude. You should just have the status Ned show, (laughs) you know. And uh, so about 50 minutes of this shit, like I just like rage quit. I'm like, dude, fuck this. I can't do anything with this shit. (laughs) I rage quit. And then then he's like, oh, what? I'm like, dude, you're you're not letting me get a word in edgewise. Yeah. You know, it's you're just talking your your status antics, you know. (laughs) And uh, anyway, so it, it was a headache. Which yeah, I feel like, you know, sometimes talking like gun control can be a headache, you know, because it's I, I feel like the reason why you wouldn't let me get a word in is because, like you said, you, you thought that you had him convinced before because he can't argue with the facts. And w- with uh, gun control, I don't think uh, you can necessarily argue with the facts because, I mean, the facts are, you know, more guns, less crime. Um, you know, criminals don't obey laws. So if you put more laws there, you're just limiting, you know, you're just making it harder for actual good people to get guns typically. Yeah. You know, so um, I don't yeah. know if I buy. I, I you know, and listen. I, I quite frankly, I'm tired of the gun, the gun argument. Like, I'm just tired of having the same fucking conversation over and over again. You know. That being said, like, I I don't necessarily know if I believe more guns equals less crime. I, I I don't I don't see any hard evidence of that. I think if you want to own a gun, you have every right to own a gun. And if someone you know goes into a club and, and shoots the place up, that doesn't mean that you automatically have to be you know, uh, constricted upon what kind of guns you can own and all that bullshit. I just, I, I, you know, just to kind of make it as simple as possible, there, I, I don't see any logical or rational reason why anyone should be limited in, in the kind of gun they own, how many guns they own, any of that. Yeah, it's, it's like the how many guns. It, that's like one of the dumbest conversations ever, if you ask me. Yeah. Because, dude, I don't give a fuck how crazy you are. You can only shoot maybe two at, a, at one time, right. you know? So who gives a fuck if this guy owns 100 guns? Yeah, what, what does it matter, dude? It, it's he's just as dangerous as the guy who owns, or potentially dangerous as the guy who owns two guns. Yeah, but the, mm. but that's the thing, though. It's like this this idea that like more guns equals less crime. I mean, you could have some guy walking down the street who's got a gun. He's like, well, I got a gun because I want there to be less crime and I can protect myself this way. And I tell you that I I think that most people, while I certainly you know support their right to carry a, a concealed weapon wherever they want. Um, you know, I don't think that that's going to necessarily always deter crime. I mean, there's a lot of people that walk around with guns and they don't know how to fucking use them. You know, if I was a criminal, you know, it would be so easy to run up on some people who have guns and take their fucking guns away. People that look at guns like they're fucking toys. You know, like. But I feel like most of the people that have concealed carry permits, 
I mean, if we're talking about concealed weapons, I mean, if we're talking open carry... Or even open carry, it doesn't matter. You know how many times I see, like, I hate when I see this, like, women like, oh, look at my pistol, I got a pink handle on it. It's not <laughs> a fucking toy, you know? It's like, mm. just fucking put it away. Like, don't fucking show it off. That's the dumbest thing. People are like, I want a gun to protect myself. Okay, well then, fucking keep it on your person, and if, if you are you know how to use it, good for you. Right. You fucking pull it out of your purse, and you're like, oh, look at my pretty gun. How well, often does like, that happen to you? Well, you it know, doesn't happen to me, but I read about it, you know? Uh, and I see, like, I see, like, people in gun clubs and stuff, and they're like, you know, like, if you pull your gun out, how easy is it for someone, that you're showing it off to your friend, I could just fucking come up and take it from you and shoot you. Well, you know, one thing I just want to put out, like, like states that, that have open carry laws, where, mm-hmm. where you can open carry, um, they, they all have less crime. And in states where, like, is that uh, true? Yes. And in uh, cities like Chicago, where there's there's no handguns in the city, and in New York City, there's there's no handguns allowed in the city. They're illegal. You know, you have more gun crime in those places. I don't know if I buy that. There's a connection there, though, because it, I'd like to know where the where the well. I mean, like, what are the, the, the point where? is the point is what do these laws really do to, to deter it? Uh, oh, rather nothing. than rather than you know prohibit well, yeah, I mean, prohibit think... uh, potentially good people from arming themselves to defend themselves. No, I get that, but okay, let's look at Chicago for instance. I mean, you're a densely populated populated area, high poverty. Um, low education high dropout rates i mean that is the that is the that that's what breeds violence so i would be curious to know where you where there are cities that have um open carry and no you poverty. know no less crime or less poverty. i mean well why is it i i, I, I I'm not convinced that it, there's a connection direct uh, connect direction. but you can say that there is not a connection between gun control laws at least in this country and lower crime. Oh, absolutely not. So that's the only thing that really matters. Like, it doesn't matter if open carry reduces crime. It matters if open carry increases crime. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it increases crime. I don't think right. it does either. Right? Yeah, that's think... what I'm saying. So then it's a non. It's a non. Uh, was it a non-starter? It's a non-issue. Like, I guess. I guess my thing is, I like to be careful. Like, because because I support Second Amendment, because I support, you know, everyone's right to to own and, and carry a firearm. I like to be careful when I when I talk about why that is. You know, well, yeah, I mean, people the, talk about like, you know, we people come out and say, well, if there's less guns, then there'll be less crime. Well, we know that's bullshit. Right. But at the same time, we say, well, there's more guns, so there'll be less crime. I don't buy that. Right. Because there's just too many people, even today, that own guns and don't know how to use them, and they're very irresponsible. I mean, well, I buy, as a gun owner, that pisses me off. Well, right. I mean, I, I, would compare it to, I would compare it to like, you know, why you, you you don't ever see a shooting at a gun show. You know, where the, yeah, I've said, I've used that argument before, but the response is basically, I mean, you're talking about a very select group of people with a very specific interest. Oh well, well, you know, according to liberals, these should be the most violent, most vile, scum of the earth people. You know, the people well, yeah, that the people that own a fuckload of guns. You know, right? Well, but that's you know, what's false. the miracle? You know, that nothing ever happens at these at these gun shows. You know, right, and if something were to happen, better, you know, you've got a bunch of armed people there to, to prevent it. So yeah. it would be the dumbest place to start some shit, as opposed to a gun free zone where you know you're just like uh, shooting fish in a barrel. Well, that's I still don't I still don't understand the gun free zone thing. Like, I don't, I can't, like, every yeah. time someone brings up, well, don't you think there should be a gun-free zone? I'm like, I don't even understand how you can wrap your, your head around that logic. I mean, yeah. you can't be that fucking stupid to think that, like, that makes any sense at all. Yeah. It's just going to make something easier, make it easier for uh, yeah. somebody I mean, to go in there. And- I think there's definitely a connection between a gun-free zone and higher, or the more like, the higher likelihood of a mass shooting. I mean, you're definitely, demonstrated over and over again. you're definitely inviting problems right. if you say, I have a gun-free zone. But, but even on top of that, it's just like when people say, we're going to put up a gun-free zone, like, even if no one ever comes in and takes advantage of that situation and shoots up the place, you still haven't solved any problems. All you did was, you just spent some money for some fucking signs. That's all you did. Oh, yeah. like, like, you know what I think is hilarious? It, it's like, um, you know the people that, you know, you, you tell them that the Second Amendment is for, at least I do, I tell people, you know, the bottom line is the Second Amendment is so, you know, you can kill tyrants if need be. You know, if the government ever gets that, that tyrannical, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you got Adolf Hitler going around chasing Jews, you know, <laughs> and everybody's like, well, that couldn't happen here. You know, and, 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 and then well, conversely, no, those, are, conversely those are the same people that compare Trump to Hitler. Well, I mean, yeah. the, the, the that could never that happen say, here. The people that say that can't happen here, let me guess, they're white. They don't have to worry about getting yeah. it up. Because I get pulled over, I don't have to worry about a cop fucking yeah, well, killing me. You know, what, 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 what about, what about Trump, man? Me. That response is dumb. But then, 
The other response that I'll get if I say something like that or see someone else say something like that. Dude, you're that, a Jew. You should own that shit, is, dude. <laughs> hold on. Shut up. Um, Don't is, tell anybody. <laughs> is that... Uh, is that okay? If the government decides they're going to start attacking us, we we, we don't have the weaponry to defend no. against the government. Uh, I mean, uh, whatever, we can't dude. fight an F sixteen with with any weapons that we currently have. Yeah, dude, yeah. And there's a bunch of people in Afghanistan right now chilling out in a cave eating canned sardines that disagree with you, dude. Yeah, but the, <laughs> the difference is we're not just trying to completely decimate those people. If we wanted to, we could just drop a nuclear bomb. On yeah, well, you think they're going to decimate their cattle? I mean, it's dude. I mean the. It, you know, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. This is the response that I get, which is why I don't even argue. I don't care about the fucking Second Amendment. A, a piece of paper doesn't grant you rights. I agree. You have that, a right yeah. to possess a gun because you have a right to own property. Well, okay, and, you, you you kind of go anarchist there for a second, but I mean, it's like I, whatever. I mean, because that's not really the case because you still vote and shit. So I mean, as long as you're going to participate, as long as you still vote, right? Okay, but that you doesn't still mean vote. I have to respect. Well, I mean, if you're if you're playing that political game, you might as well d- defend the Second Amendment, which is like as long as we're going by that political game. Well, you my know, political game is my, the ends of my political game are just to spread the message of liberty. Yeah, well, it has you something know, to do with like respecting the pol- the political game. It's I don't I, I think the the Constitution is something you can use, just like Ron Paul used it for years but and I mean, years and years, cons- and he still uses it. Yeah, but the Constitution can backfire on you because people just say, oh well, it's a living document. Oh well, it had this intention and. You know the whole musket thing, and then you can argue that, but it doesn't well, you, really. Well, you go can anywhere. argue that, but, but the, the musket argue... thing's fucking dumb, dude. It's like on, saying free on. speech doesn't cover computers. I know it's a dumb argument, but I'm just saying you get you get wrapped in this endless circle when you can just say, look, if you have any understanding of the non-aggression principle or natural rights or anything like that, you can kind of understand how the only the only way you can keep guns out of people's hands is to use other guns. The only say that again. The only way the only way that you can keep guns out of some people's hands is to use other guns in other people's hands. Well, why should you even want to keep guns out of other people's hands? It's not, it's not, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is, is well, that, I mean, I understand that you want to keep guns out of bad people's hands. Okay, yes, criminals' hands, but... You know, I, I see, yeah, I see exactly what you're saying, you know. And then what do you do when, when guns are in bad people's hands? You know, you call good guys, uh, quote-unquote, good guys over with guns in their hands. You know, so why would you want to disarm the good guys? Right, well, yeah. I mean, that's uh-huh. sort of what I'm saying, but yeah. I'm, I'm also just making the point that that the only way to keep guns out of someone's hands is to use aggression against that person. Yes. So you're violating the non-aggression principle. You know, and I mean, that's... So you got to make... I think the strongest argument that you can make against gun control is going to be the ethical argument. Because you can... We can talk about statistics all day, and there's statistics that go this way and statistics that go that way. But at the end of the day... It's a steal Jer- Gary Johnson's <laughs> catchphrase at the end of the day. Um... <laughs> You know, it's it's really the ethical reason, I, in my opinion, is the strongest argument against gun control. But no one's talking about that. You know, every time I see an argument, it's like, oh, well, if we limit AR-15, it gets like this in the super specific mm-hmm. details that ultimately have no bearing on reality. Oh, yeah. It's and like you just get bogged bad. down in the weeds when it's just like, dude, look, people have the right to do whatever they want as long as they don't hurt someone else. And owning a gun doesn't hurt anybody. Yeah. Sh- shooting somebody with a gun hurts those people, uh, and those people should be dealt with as they commit those crimes. Or we should prevent those people from committing those crimes by self-defense, you know. But, you know, ultimately it's an ethical argument, I think, that makes the strongest case. Mm. So, you, so you're saying you're an ethical guy? I, I, don't think so. <laughs> I like to think I'm not a piece you of shit. You're some kind of moral do-gooder? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I try. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, well, don't you think like uh, don't you think there's something to be said for like libertarianism being the most uh, like moral philosophy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, especially if you if you center like, you know, talking about like uh, a purist libertarian, um, if you a principled libertarian, you know, your ideology is basically centered around the NAP, the non-aggression principle. So and when you're talking about any issue, you're you're talking about well, how does how does this go along with the nap, you know? And uh, you know, violence I would say is the worst thing that goes on in the world. You know, Jeff, you and I were talking. What was it last night? We were talking about like our hot button issues. Oh yeah, yeah. And you know, like my number one and two, of course, my number one is ending the wars, and then my number two is ending the drug wars. Right. And then you were saying like your your top three. Yeah, pretty well. Those are two of my top two, and then the environment is the other one. So the environment is that three for you or two? 
Uh, that would be three for me. So the environment's like more important than ending the drug war. No, well, no, no. The three. drug war is you more important three. than me. The, okay, so, so, the, so, the, so I would say so number one for me to, is okay. just generally speaking. The, my my main issue, number one issue, is 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 the uh, the policy of the United States to go and bomb the shit. Yeah, out of foreign the world. policy, Same and here. not even just bombing people, but just kind of you know being the uh, you know self. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just like. Somebody decided at one point that we're gonna Police we're gonna the world. run everything. We're yeah. the king, you know, yeah. and um, forcing our will. So yeah, so like everything. I mean, even okay. So let's look at the drug war. The drug war didn't just start in fucking, you know, Germany or China. The drug war started here, and then we used our you know our ability to control the world to say, oh well, you're gonna fucking make sure that, you know, you're not gonna let people smoke weed here and here and here. I mean, it all really is kind of Wait, are you spawned that in the United the reason States. That really. Absolutely. I mean, look at if you uh, if we go back to and I've talked about this before with um, uh, Harry Anslinger, the uh, the guy that was like the first U.S. drug czar. Yeah. Um, I mean, this guy was a racist fucking scumbag who essentially outlawed marijuana because that was the only way that he could keep his job because he didn't want to bother the white people with the coke. And he's like, when well, he hated black people, so he's like, okay, well, let's make it illegal to, to you know, have have weed. And then that right. then you know that went on to hemp, and it just kind of spread and spread and spread. And that's where we are today, you know. But I mean, again, yeah. I mean, my big thing is I'm really just I'm I, I just I've done stuff for the International Rescue Committee. I've like volunteered with them, and um, I donate a lot of my time and and um, and my clothes to their re- resettlement committees and stuff like that. Hmm. Man, like the shit that people go through overseas, particularly in the Middle East. Like I get that there before we ever came, ever came along, there was a lot of stuff going on in the Middle East, a lot of tribal wars yeah, and stuff like that. Violence. But you know, it's like, where do they get those those guns? Right. You know, where do they get the money where do they get the money to buy those guns? I mean it really stems from what we're doing here. Mm. You know, so I'm just I'm just so fucking tired of you know, seeing another drone strike or another <sighs> thirty you know, thirty uh kids just in a schoolhouse that got you know, their fucking heads blown off, right. you know, partially by some tribal leader in another, you know, part of their country and partially because they're walking from school and they got bombed by a drone. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm doctors just without borders hospital. Tired or, of it. Yeah. 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 It's just, I'm just, I don't know. Like, again, like some days I just, I read something. I, I just get so frustrated because you, you sit there and you're like, what the fuck? I feel like I need to do something. Like I, even though I have nothing to do with how this happened, like I feel responsible in a little bit, you know, cause I'm like, I live here. Like this is, I'm a United States citizen, and I go to other parts of the world, and they're not going to say, oh, it's you know Obama that's bombing me. They're going to say, it's the U.S. that's bombing me, and I'm a part of that. that yeah. It just it's bums me out, man. So, yeah, I just, I just, I'm so tired of war. I'm so tired of us starting wars and continuing wars and profiting from wars. It's just, I mean, we're talking about ethics. I mean, how unethical is that? To, right. kill, to kill kids, you and know, because, yes, yeah, so you can make some money, <laughs> you know. Yep. Mm. And same with the drug war, to me. I mean, just the... Yep. I mean, I think the drug war is, in my opinion, the number one domestic issue. But it really goes f- outside. But it does, right. Yeah, it I does, mean, yeah. look at Mexico's drug problem. Right. That's not because of well, yeah, Mexico. Convers- that's because from, that's from us. Yep. I was having a conversation uh, with someone yesterday about immigration, and I was talking about how no one talks about the reasons why we have, why Mexicans want so badly to get into the U.S. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because Mexico sucks compared to the U.S., right? And why does Mexico yeah. suck? I wouldn't say Mexico sucks. Well, it, clearly it sucks for these people that are trying to get in the U.S. for a better life, and they're willing to risk their lives yeah. and you know risk going to jail. Yeah, I mean, there's certain things about Mexico that don't suck. But I'm saying there's a lot of poverty, there's a lot, and there's a lot of violence, which mm-hmm. is due to right. the war on drugs. Right, exactly. And so I said, well, why don't we, you know, when we're talking, you know, when Trump's getting out there beating his chest about building a wall, we should be, you know, if he was a really legitimate person that cared about right. anything besides himself, he'd be talking about, well, we need to end the drug war so that the cartels can stop, you know, earning revenue off of the illegal drug trade. And then you'll have no, you know, the cartel violence will diminish because they won't be able to sustain themselves. Which will, you know, end, you know, help to end that cycle of poverty and that cycle of violence that's going on. It's not going to obviously pull everybody out of poverty, right? Right. But, you know, 
you're not going to be fleeing to the U.S. because, you know, you're worried about your kid getting killed in the middle of right. a, a gang fight, you right. know? Right, right. Um, and, like, I, I was also talking about how I... Have you guys ever seen Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown show? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, did you see the one where he goes to Columbia? No, I did not see that one. So, he goes to Columbia. Oh, and, yeah, I saw that. And I he's, like, that. talking to people living there, and, like, pretty much every person he talked to was, like... And the drug war. And the, and drug, the drug war. war. Yeah. And the drug war. Like, this is destroying... Mm-hmm. Oh, this is destroying and I, I remember one guy in particular, I saw that too, and I got a boner. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, dude, like, was... One dude in particular was, was saying, the U.S. needs to end the drug war. It's because of the U.S.'s policies. Yeah. And Anthony Bourdain, I love the guy. I just... I just yeah, he was a little I, disappointing on that episode, though. I, I, exactly. Well, yeah, I, that's he was what like, I was He was say. like, well, cocaine, like, ruined part of my life or something like that or he's like cocaine's ruined a lot of lives or like it, it's so no that was your choices dude yeah, exactly. yeah. it was you your choice your to pull yourself out of it too right. yep so it's it looks like yeah. actually prohibition I would say it ruins more lives than cocaine <laughs> oh yeah. for sure yeah you and know, it just, it's the you prohibition know, of the cocaine you know that and like if you want to go get help you know you're you're stigmatized and there isn't really help available for you that's that you don't risk getting in trouble for you know in some cases hmm um, so yeah, uh, Assange. Well, well I was gonna say oh, go to ahead. the drug war. You know, I was at the um, I was at a cannabis conference uh. this week in New York, um, and uh, Gary Johnson was there, and you know he was doing his thing, speaking about legalization, and you know obviously everyone there supported what he was saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and he, you know, again, like he he, I really like. Was well, cool because like the guy that put on the conference said something really interesting. Uh, he said, "You know, I know that a lot, and I'm just paraphrasing. But he said, I know that a lot of people here, or some people here, aren't going to vote for Gary Johnson, and that's okay. But at least support the effort to get him on the stage of the debate. Yeah, because if that happens, Dude, that's he awesome. will force he will force the other two candidates." To confront, acknowledge this issue, which yeah. Gary Johnson is spearheading. Yeah, exactly. So, and I thought that made so much sense. Like, yeah. even if you don't, even if you don't want, even if you don't vote at all, if there's anything you can do to support support getting him on that stage, man, that's gonna that's gonna accomplish. I think it's gonna accomplish a lot, especially in the sense that if you, if, if there's a situation where he can say, and you know, he'll say he's full, I mean, he's legalization 100, percent not even trying to. You've just given me ideas for like articles and you know a website and. I mean, really, to just push getting Johnson on the debates, yeah. even if even if he's not your guy, you yeah. know, he's like if if you're serious about ending the wars, ending the drug war, mm-hmm. you know, if you think that he's great on those issues, you know, that which uh, Hillary and Trump are pretty horrible on, you know, fucking support the guy, yeah. you know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would just love, I would love to see that situation where what will happen is they're going to bring up legalization, Gary Johnson's going to say 100 percent legalization, no no fucking rescheduling. It shouldn't even be fucking scheduled. We should yeah. not be scheduled at all. Full legalization. And then what we're going to hear after that is the, you know, prearranged little soundbite that both Trump and Hillary are going to come up with. And it's going to sound so fucking pathetic. And it's going to sound so rehearsed. Right. And, you know, and it just, I think it'll really, I think it'll really fire up the movement, which is, again, like we were talking, it's like, it's one of the most important issues of this election, of, of any election yeah, totally. at this yeah. time, you know? And of any, of any election, but it's never talked about. But we have a chance with somebody like Johnson yeah. tech, and with somebody like Hillary, people like Hillary and, and uh, Trump being so bad, you know, it's, we have a chance to really get this message out there. And in so. a positive way, because Gary Johnson's not going to be like, hey, man, I should be free to get high. He's going to be like, no, people are fucking dying. And your and your tax dollars are killing these people. Hopefully, hopefully. Because, I mean, it's one thing about like Johnson. He, he's he's my guy. He would have been my candidate. I, I feel like he can be better at speaking sometimes. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's true. Um, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it's fucking, it's almost irrelevant. Because any of those people, that everybody, criti- uh, it seems like a lot of peers criticize the guy. And it's like, oh, none of you are running who can speak any better. You know what right. I mean? Right. It's, nobody has convinced me that uh, that they're a better person for the job. That, that that's running at least or that, that ran you know yeah so I think now the time is to get behind him and also it's a good time for Gary Johnson to get some uh, lessons maybe yeah <laughs> like, well that's the yeah. thing too we were I, we were talking earlier about that Samantha B episode when he was she um, uh, interviewed Gary Johnson it was a pretty interesting interview but they they went to the liber- the the, um, the the libertarian conference and um, the convention or the convention I mean and it's like, man, like if if there's ever been more proof, and I've always known this anyway, that the Libertarian Party needs better messaging, you know, needs 
needs a, a better uh, spokesperson, spokesperson messaging, just a better overall attack on things. You know, it sucks because like I, I look at Gary Johnson, I'm like, how he's clearly so far ahead of of Hillary and Trump. It's like how I can't even understand how anybody would have voted for the other two over Gary Johnson. That's one yeah. thing. But if they knew about at, him, at least if they knew about <laughs> yeah. him. But Gary Johnson said something really interesting in that interview. They said, you know, she said, well, tell me about who are these libertarians? And he's like, basically, these are people that just want to be left alone. They want to be, you know, free to live a, a peaceful life. And it was a, you know, a very good response. And, and he said some of the people. And she's like, well, what about the other ones? He's like, well, the rest of them are batshit crazy. And he's right. <laughs> you know, it's like and it's true. There he said it many, about he said about libertarians. He, he said he, he was saying, like, there are some people in libertarian at this convention that are saying, look. We want to move forward. We want to move forward with liberty. And there's some people at this convention are batshit crazy. People are just showing up saying fucking crazy outlandish things that will never, ever, ever fly. Or stuff that stuff that's going to sound crazy to the average person just because they're they're so in favor. Well, you know, like Daryl Perry's already like an yeah. asshole that like got up on stage and started like stripping. Dude, I thought that was funny. Fuck you. Okay, but it's okay. Like, seriously, that that was funny as shit, dude. But but if yeah, you but, dude, but if you, you gotta wanna... think in the context of like what this looks like to the rest uh, of the dude, world. exactly. I would be paying attention to this party. I'm like, oh, what the fuck is this? I'd read about it. No, nah, I, I mean, mean if... you're like you're very small. You represent like very few people, dude. You know, <laughs> no what, you know, what, and you know, and you probably uh, see bad this. publicity is good publicity. When I talk to I people, I think I don't think it was a good thing. When I talk to people, especially at conferences, especially like environmental things, like conferences. Most people there are Democrats, and when they find out that I'm a libertarian, they're really shocked. And then when I talk to them, they're like, oh, you're not fucking crazy. You know, like, yes, I'm very rational. And the libertarian philosophy is very rational. And if, if it's explained in a way that doesn't come off so kooky, yes. I think it's much easier for people to embrace it. So uh, I would love well, to it's see— It's also the association of, like, libertarians with just, like, you know, NRA gun nut, you yeah. know, um, that sort of thing. Like— there's a like and like I guess like the sort of like the right wing association exactly you know, exactly when it's just yeah look we just want a peaceful society with as as few what is the word I'm with, as minimal aggression as possible mm -hmm. yeah and I gotta tell you you know and I've, I've well, thought see, about this like I, I don't think hardcore libertarians in my mind aren't aren't right wing at all. Or what? Uh, hardcore libertarians usually, to me, like I don't think of them as right wing. Like I yeah, would, th I, would either, yeah. I would think of like maybe right, like. But, but a lot you, of people. I'm, not, do. I'm talking outside of you. Yeah. I'm talking like the general. You know, mo the average person's conception, if it's, they've even heard like, of libertarianism, is like yeah. But oh, I mean, it's I'm, this I'm just saying, most of the, right wing gun nuts. If somebody's a hardcore libertarian, they're they're hardcore right wing as as far as in they want smaller government than anybody yeah. else well, in the right get, wing. You get that, but they're also um, you know so so much more hardcore left wing in that they, I, they want more right. uh, civil liberties. Yeah. And, I I agree with you. We, yeah. we both but agree you have with you to on that, but put home. yourself, but, but you but yeah. like take yourself out of that situation and look around you. You know, and most people are going to – and I think it's also because the way libertarians have been pitched for so long, you know. Um, I would just – and, you know, that's the thing. I thought about this before because I'm moving to New York. But if I weren't moving to New York, I, Dan was – he was on the show one time, my friend Dan. And we had talked about this a little bit. I was like, you know, if I was staying in Maryland, I really do believe – that I would probably make an effort to, 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 to run for some kind of office. Because I really do think that I could provide like a rational alternative. You were actually talking about this the other day. I would love to do that. I would and love to bring would, some rational You would do well, dude. I, th I think I – and you know what my, my favorite part You could probably be, even run as a Democrat, dude. Run as a Democrat? Yes, seriously. Dude, like hear me out. Hear me out, okay? Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean no. like, like dude, honestly, I feel, like, I feel like you could do fine with either people. But I think Maryland being a more democratic state – and I, I feel like, you know, the way you talk, like you were, you were telling me that, you know, they were surprised uh, when you go to these conferences that you're a libertarian, yeah. you know, it's basically, you know, and meanwhile, you know, you just don't sound like a libertarian, you know? So I, I don't, I, I just feel like you would do really well, man. I mean, what I, is I just, stopping you from running for whatever party, but just say, <laughs> <laughs> Stella's like, no, that shit. Um, yeah. Like what is stopping you from? Running for the Democratic Party and just saying just completely libertarian shit. You know what I mean? Like, There's nothing. Yeah. There's like, absolutely nothing. You're right. You're like right. people, because that's the thing. People don't think. But fuck, dude. I, I think you might do well as a Republican. Also, conversely, I mean, I don't yeah, think I'm right. That's what I'm saying. Like the thing is, unfortunately, no, I mean, as far as maybe getting a Republican elected, 
I mean, because like I said, if you would do well with liberals in a liberal state, you mm-hmm. know, maybe maybe the Republican Party would be more prone to have you than the Democratic Party. I don't know how hard it would be to get in. But I mean, either way, dude, I think you would do well running as either. Mm-hmm. But I've always wanted to see a libertarian uh, pull a Ron Paul with the Democratic Party. Oh, right. I'm Seriously, saying, yeah. that's I what I want to see. That's why I'm getting better. a huge boner thinking about that yeah. aspect I still, of it. I still know? maintain that Ron Paul probably would have done better if he could have gone done the same exact thing but with the democratic party yeah maybe but i think ron paul is probably might be a better salesman to republicans but at the same time a lot of democrats uh, fell for him too yeah. so but I don't, see, see here's my my thing is though like i feel like most people that play like the red and blue game mm-hmm. right they're not thinking in terms of like what are this guy's policies. They're thinking in terms of oh, like, yeah. is he a Democrat? Yeah. Is he a Republican? So you go in, and you pretend to be a Democrat or whatever. Mm-hmm. But and but you also say some cool shit, and they hear that and they're like, oh yeah, I like I like what this guy's saying. And right. you know, there's also just having charisma, and your marketing being on point, and your campaigning being right. on point. Well, that's the thing too. It's like I've been a plenty of these. Um, town hall meetings and when these guys come up and speak and it's funny because I sit there and listen to them it was about I don't know maybe I don't remember it was the it was, it was the previous election previous presidential election and there were all these people that were running for different um, different offices in, in, in Baltimore and they're all getting up there and they're speaking and the whole time I'm thinking it's like I would bury every single person up here in, in a debate yeah. Just fucking destroy them. And I'm not talking just like the random people that did that just sounded nutty anyway, that just were kind of kooky and they want to run for something. I'm talking about like the guys that, you know, the Sarbanes, Sarbanes was up there. And I'm just like, I would love to take him, mm. you know, to go toe to toe with that guy. Or right. um, Elijah Cummings was there. And I'm just like, boy, I would love to go toe to toe with you, you know, because I would provide a rational response and um, an argument to the things that he says. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, you know, if we come back to Maryland, I may actually consider it. And if we stay up in New York, maybe after a few years and I, I kind of, you know, get more acclimated to the, to the area, I, I may pursue that. I think it was something I'd really enjoy doing. I would, I would, even if it was just for like one term, you know, just right. to kind of go in and shake things up a little bit. And, um, and hopefully show the people like, hey, you know what? Free markets really do work if you give them a chance. Yeah. If you, if you do it the right way, you know, if you don't, take kickbacks from everybody and you don't owe anybody anything right you know and yeah you know what you can give a shit about the environment and not be a fucking socialist it's possible <laughs> you know <laughs> and in, in fact a lot more things you know you you could do a lot more good for the environment by embracing free market principles but you know how that is <laughs> awesome man i'm just I'm, I'm preaching to the choir at this point no i, I think that's great man so you met Gary at the concert. I did. I did. I met Gary. Really nice guy. Um, didn't get to talk to him too much. Um, but, uh, yeah, just... There was one guy there who was kind of was trying to challenge him on, on, gun, on the gun control thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was like, hey, you know, I'm really with you on the canvas thing. But on guns, he's like, you know, if there, you think there should be a gun... If you, if you become president, you know, during the inauguration, do you think that should be a gun-free zone? Or do you think people should be able to carry guns? He was, like, totally trying to, like, draw him into In this debate. Yeah. <laughs> And like this other guy, thank God this other guy was there. And he was this other guy I was talking to, happened to be a libertarian, was saying, he's like, hey, you know, he came here to talk about cannabis. He's only got a couple of minutes. Can we all want to talk to him? Can you? And, you know, and, you know here's a perfect example of what I was talking about, uh, rational behavior. This was a libertarian guy rationally going up to this guy who was getting all fired up, by the way. Yeah. You know, and he's like, listen, hey, you know, we just want to talk about cannabis right now. Can you do this another time? Because. You know, Governor Johnson, he's, he's only got a couple minutes here. Yeah. We would like all to have a chance to talk to him. And this guy kept going and going. And finally, I just kind of like inched my way through and just started, I just cut him off and started talking to Gary Johnson, yeah, yeah. you know. And, but boy, that, isn't that a perfect example of what I'm talking about? Like, I, I don't believe that most libertarians are crazy. I think most libertarians, like we were saying, are just like us, yeah, rational, yeah. well meaning people. And um, and very calm and you know and very pleasant and and respectful you know yeah. no one like screamed at this guy to tell him to shut up no one there was no violence mm-hmm. he you know calmly hey hey do right. you mind if we just do this and Let's that is the to... messaging that's that's what that's what the libertarian party really needs to get on right yeah yeah exactly I mean it's while that is true it's just there's there seems to be a perception that goes around. That just, it's like a stereotype of like the crazy libertarian. Right. Whatever, you know, he just. Yeah. And even though, like, what, you know, even the stereotype is like, okay, yeah, like, I, 
I, I kind of agree with your stereotype, or like I agree with like what your stereotyped guy is saying, but the way it's um, presented is like not the way that we really behave. You know what I mean? Right. Like yeah, sure. Like I'm all for like gun ownership, but I wouldn't say I'm like a gun nut. You know? Right. What's up? Speaking of the mic. I'm speaking of the mic. <laughs> Okay. Bro. Anyways, <laughs> get your mouth closer to it. Yeah, Love dude. it. Um, Embrace pretend it. Pretend it's my dick. <laughs> oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah, breathe on that this shit. This is way bigger than your dick, dude. <laughs> Was your mom tell you everything? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Too so, anyways. Um, yeah. Not only are libertarians rational people, we're also <laughs> children. We're also a bunch of assholes. So. <laughs> we're also, don't, you know, be, don't be confused. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Um, so you wanted to discuss Bernie versus Ron Paul a comparison? Yeah, dude. Then diagram. You know, and then uh, you know. Is there something that spurned this? Yeah, people are always having that conversation, and I saw the other day online somebody pointed out, you know, when Ron Paul lost uh, the presidency in uh, 2008 and 2012, you know, he didn't go on to endorse the party's nominee. You know, he wasn't playing ball. You know, but now Bernie Sanders is talking about he'll do everything he can to work with Hillary Clinton. You know. And it, it, I think it just kind of goes to show, like, a huge difference in, uh, like, you know, Ron Paul was actually principal, you know? And, yeah. Well, and, I think and, the argument that you're going to get from Bernie supporters, and, yeah. of course, they'll say, like, anything to defend the guy, but they'll respond by saying, well, he has a serious chance of influencing the Democratic platform and coming out with a more progressive platform, whereas... Well, I mean, you, you might have heard the same thing... That. You he didn't might get have that heard, far, though. You might have heard the same thing from... Yeah, he didn't get that far, but I, I don't think he would have done, done it personally. Do you think he would have endorsed the Republican frontrunner at any cost? I, I don't think so. No, no. Well, if... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that he didn't go on to like, switch his party if he could and run as a libertarian. I, I'm disappointed that he didn't do, didn't do that this time. I, I, think, I think even if, if Ron Paul came in and ran as Gary Johnson's VP... It's, but Ron Paul, I feel like Ron Paul hasn't even backed Gary Johnson because Ron Paul is like, Gary Johnson's not principled enough, you know? And I also feel like Ron Paul is disappointed that Gary Johnson picked Bill Weld, mm -hmm. you know? I understand why Johnson picked Bill Weld. Bill Weld wouldn't have been my first uh, pick for Johnson. I was kind of pissed when I first heard it was Bill Weld, but I understand it. And Bill Weld, Bill Weld is kind of like, a, you know, cash cow piggy bank, you know? Right. And if, if Johnson's at the head of the ticket, you know, I'm, I'm still behind the ticket. And you know, I, I, you know, I see who There's Bill, I see who Bill Weld, um, I see who Bill Weld kind of like, uh, you know, uh, like entices. You know, he entices like a lot of Republicans. I feel like, you know, and I feel like Bill, Bill Weld, he's not a libertarian by any means to me. He's just he's more of like a liberal Republican, right? Which that's not a libertarian, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, if Gary Johnson sold the front of the ticket, I'll still support the ticket. Right. Well, I think you know? the other reason why you won't see Ron Paul endorsing him is because he's pro-choice. I've always speculated that as well, you know. And but it, I, th and I think that's another reason why, like, Tom Woods won't endorse him. I think it's like a secret reason. Maybe. I but mean, it, of course, it's a speculation, but... You know, I've, I've said it a bunch before, and I've been saying it since 2012 when nobody gave a shit and everybody was still behind Gary Johnson. I've been saying, you know, Gary Johnson's not like a principal libertarian. He doesn't spend his, after, his afternoons on Mises.org, you know? Um, he's just a, a normal dude who's like fiscally conservative, socially liberal, so he comes to a lot of those uh, libertarian conclusions, you know? And... Uh, he was able to succeed in politics, you know, he became, he was a two-term governor of New Mexico, you know. Um, so, you know, I feel like he is probably the, the best person that we have out of the running to pick to represent us. And he's libertarian enough for me, you know, mm -hmm. while I might side more with somebody like Daryl Perry, who's a straight-up anarchist, you know, at the same time, that person is going to be just too extreme for the average voter. Right. And plus, on top of that, you know, I, I'm not – Johnson just comes off as like a nicer dude than Daryl Perry. Right. <laughs> I know. You know? I mean, it, 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 if, if Daryl Perry came off as like cool as Gary Johnson, I might, I might pick Daryl Perry. But, you know, he doesn't and nobody else does. You know, and, and Gary Johnson's a huge leap in the right direction with some proven political credibility. I think – you know, look, I think that if the Libertarian Party wants to get any traction after this election, it really needs – it needs to clean house. I think it needs to get, like I said, it needs to get its messaging in order. It needs to stop randomly, because I, I feel like sometimes you'll see somebody that runs on the libertarian ticket, 
and they're just the worst person for the job, but they just want to get somebody in there. And quite frankly, I'd rather you have no libertarian in there if that person's again batshit crazy because they're going to make things worse. They're going to they're going to keep when you do that, you continue the perception that libertarians are crazy. When I went to that town Well, thing, I mean, dude, did you watch the presidential debates, the libertarian debates? Some of them. You did. You watched the libertarian debates. Yeah, yeah, I watched the libertarian stuff on the I didn't watch it live. I watched the like, I mean, is there anybody that you can name that you thought was bad shit crazy? That was running? Uh, yeah, besides John McAfee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's his point, though. Which, it's like, yeah. It's like, and not to say that we should prevent someone like John McAfee from running, but I don't think yeah, we should I mean, put John McAfee no, on but, I, mean, I don't know. I thought he was entertaining, dude. I was well, talking to a guy about the other day, and, and he, he seemed to like McAfee a lot. You know, this is a guy who's not even a libertarian. Well, yeah, let, let me so. give you an example of what I'm talking about. This one guy was running a liber- I libertarian like a ticket for, uh, like, comptroller, city comptroller, a few years back. And it was a 19-year-old kid who was an accounting major in college. He had, I mean, he was a, he was a child. He, he didn't even understand how things work in the real world. And you could tell when he was speaking. And he was, he, he was ripping off uh, um, sound bites from Sarah Palin, you know? And it's just like, you're not doing anybody any good. Because if I, if I don't know anything about libertarianism, okay, and the only libertarian person I see on that stage is this guy, well, my immediate response is, what the fuck is the Libertarian Party? This is the Libertarian Party, really? Yeah. I'd rather see no Libertarian up there if you can't get someone good in there. Right. Don't, don't, waste, don't waste the opportunity to get don't. a quality person out there. Well, I mean, I think the problem is there's, there's not more like legitimate Libertarians running to beat this guy out for the spot. And, and I wouldn't rag on this dude necessarily for trying because you never know. I'm if this, if this guy's trying. a 19-year-old kid in 20 years, he might be kicking ass. I'm not ragging him for trying. He, he's, he's new to this game. I'm not ragging him for trying, but the idea that like, we were talking about, you know, Democrats and Republicans do this too. They're like, it doesn't matter who's running as long as they have red or blue. I'm not going to vote for someone just because they're running on a libertarian ticket. You know, are you familiar with Tom Woods? You're, you're listening to mm-hmm. a fair amount of him? Yeah. I mean, personally, like, I think the dude's, like, fucking awesome. He's a great speaker. He just comes off as a nice dude. I, I like the guy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he's, he's very critical of Gary Johnson and the, the LP picking Gary Johnson. And at the same time, you know, why, doesn't, why the fuck doesn't this guy run? I feel like Tom Woods would do excellent as a Republican. Yeah. I feel like he could be the next Ron Paul. I, yeah, I don't you know. know. It's like it's, it's but that's a much better debater than Rand Paul. But that's my point. Either get someone good in place or don't put anybody. But you in kind there. of have a catch twenty two where it's like the more libertarian you are, the more you despise the political system. So you're less inclined yeah, to engage right. in it. You know? But the, the, here's the thing: it's, <laughs> it's like a shame. If, if, if we're trying, if we're trying to reach outside right. the world of libertarianism, if we're trying to go that's, to the Democrats yeah. and Republicans, we have to do it in a smart way. Right. And and the libertarians party has not been able to do that ron paul did the best job of that i think yes but beyond that i haven't seen any evidence of that so i would love to see the libertarian party get get someone in place who who understands messaging and who understands how to get the word out in the right way stop worrying about you know the pure libertarians or the anarchists look they're going to vote they're not going to vote for democrat or republican anyway well you know conversely the other you know talking to some of my friends who are like you know a hundred percent you know principled or purist mm-hmm. you know "Quote unquote," like they're they they express to be their concerns of you know you get somebody like Bill Weld involved as the the VP with all this big money, and then you get a lot of Republicans voting for the Libertarian Party. You know it sounds like a good thing, but what if the Republicans take over the Libertarian Party the same way that the neocons took over the the Tea Party? I mean, you, gotta, you know, so that is something well, to fear. I that is a legitimate things, concern. I think the Tea Party was bullshit. I think the Tea Party was comprised. It was not from oh, from, from, was, from from the beginning. No way, dude. Look, like I was on. I was from the beginning. You know, I read about no, no, the Tea no, Party. You're right. You're right. From the beginning, I agree with you. From the beginning, like I, I went to their quick. website, and in everything that they were saying on their website, they might have had like ten points, and, and I might have been like on board with like eight or nine of them. But I think the know? problem was it was it was it was too it was too scattered, and it was a great opportunity for for the batshit crazy people to come in and the violent people come in and the but racist you, people come but in you, and claim it. But dude, you, you got to gotta admit though, the, the higher the numbers you get, the, the more incentive there is to, uh, you know, for the big money powers to get in there and, and kind of try to like uh, accommodate it. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. But what, what are you supposed to do? I mean, that's a yeah, risk that you have to take. You know? Well, it's a risk you have to take, but at the same time, you, you should be mindful of it. 
You know, because I mean, like if you think about it, no, it may, right. might you not be, be mindful of it. It might not be the best thing to grow the Libertarian Party too much in one election. You know what I mean? You you might, and then that that's one of the concerns with Gary Johnson. You know, they want a candidate that that that's more principled. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because if, he, if this guy's getting people into it, you want him to getting be getting people into it with uh, principles. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I'm just saying I I do see the devil's advocate argument. Right. That's, yeah, that makes sense. I still don't think that the Libertarian Party as a whole has got their shit together. I mean, we we talked about well, this one time. I mean, honest, from a purely pragmatic yeah. standpoint, like I don't really give a fuck about the Libertarian Party. What I give a fuck about is someone getting someone in office who's going to end the war on drugs. I don't care if like his other policy is like yeah, but you're not going to get that from the Democrats or the Republicans. Right. Well, so. that's what I'm saying though. It's like the only reason why I'm supporting the Libertarian Party is well, not the only reason, but one of the reasons is because if we can get I mean, if by some, you know, snowball's chance in hell, like, Gary gets elected, we'll, we may see the end of the drug war, most mm-hmm. likely. Um, even if he doesn't get elected, but he gets on the debate stage, as we discussed earlier, the topic gets thrown into the conversation, which is a positive thing. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's about spreading the message. It's not necessarily about growing the party. Um, it's not necessarily about growing the party, per se, for the sake of the party. It's more, this is what seems to be, like, one vector that we can use to spread the message of liberty but, but, and, and increase the amount of liberty in the world. Right, but let's go back to the word how to do it. It's, it's, it's how do you spread the message? Because every time I look at a, if I look, for, look at someone, I mean, not Gary Johnson, but like on a local level, mm. at least here in Maryland, when I look for libertarians that are running, how often do you see them have a Facebook page or a Twitter account? Or oh, yeah, their it's website? Always, and their websites look like fucking garbage. Yeah. No, I'm 100%. Yeah. I mean, how you, you're saying? I mean, it's like fucking amateur hour over there. Yeah, which is why, like, I'm like we were discussing it the other day with um, what was what was the guy's name? Your friend that uh, was from. He had the glasses. We were like sitting down on the porch. What the hell's his name? Was Steve Bearson? Yeah, 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 okay. Steve. Yeah. Um, like we were discussing with him, like, you know, why don't you guys like just try and like just run for like a very small like councilman position, mm-hmm. you know, and then. You can do, you can make some small changes, some you know, shake things up a little bit, mm-hmm. and if you like it or you see some progress, then you can kind of move up a ladder. Well, even beyond know. that, here's here's the great thing about it. and one thing I would reason I would like to to run at some point for some kind of position, not so much just to to get things going, you know, try to like excel and become a bigger politician. And what I'd like to do is use it as a case study. I would like to go somewhere and actually do things where again, like I can show free market. Um, solutions to environmental problems, um, it, it handled uh, you know drug problems and and uh, you know job creation things like that. But do it do it in a in a in a more liberty minded fashion, you know. And then and I truly believe these things would work. And then use it as a case study. So when people come out and say, "Oh, libertarians are crazy and they don't you know they're mean and everyone thinks that you know you're an Ayn Rand follower if you're a libertarian," right. it's like, well, I tell you what, I was in this office for four years. You know, jo- we have more jobs available here, more economic freedom here. People are coming here to work. People are coming here to live. Right. You know, the environment is is much better off now because of, we instituted these free market principles. That is a case study that can be used and presented. To you know, to to the to the country, right. I haven't seen anyone do that, and I'm sure there's got to be examples of this working. I mean, Gary Johnson's done it to some extent, right, you know, right. for looking back at his career. Um, but it, yeah, to, again, I guess just to me, and maybe it's just because my background, because my background isn't is in marketing, you know, and I and I yeah. know how to get a message out. Um, man, the Libertarian Party has just really dropped the ball on that. So. Dude, well, hey, um, thanks for being on this week, dude. Uh, it was fucking awesome. I'm pleased to be back. Thanks for having me. Again. We got to do it again, and we got to Skype you in after you move to New York. Yeah, and go, and so. yeah. hopefully there'll be weekends where you're, you're in Baltimore, and we can do this as well. So, um, you know, Sweet. until next time, live free. Have the power, have the power.
Not aggression principle, the violence of the state becomes obsolete! 